Hello, I'm Shield War 100 and welcome back to my channel for another Ancients Historical Wargame using the Hail Caesar rule set. I've got a lot of requests for more content like this and I've got together some further Persian units, so why not? For today's battle we're going back further than I have before to 497 BC. The Ionian Greeks, long having been part of the Persian Empire, had grown tired of the administration imposed upon them and rose up in rebellion. Despite the failure to take Sardis without setting it on fire, and then a defeat at Ephesus, the revolt had spread and much of the eastern fringe of the Greek world was in open defiance of Persia. In this fictional game, a force of Greeks has been brought to battle by a more mobile Persian contingent, the latter picking an area with plenty of open space in which to use their cavalry. Let's get on and see the board layout and survey the armies for today's game. Well, here's the Persian force I'll be using today. Um, it's, uh, it's models we've seen in previous battle report, uh, battle report of mine before, but uh, this time it's an all Persian force. I uh, managed to dig out some extra models and get them painted up, etc., etc. But let's uh, break it down. We've got four individual divisions, the first of which, as you can see quite clearly, is a cavalry division with their leader there two units of medium cavalry and two unit, uh, two small units should i say of light cavalry behind uh, right so there you go there's a there's a good hard hitting um, division there which the greeks will struggle to match on this board i think um, right uh, the rest well the bulk of the persian army is as you can see made up of solid ranks of medium infantry spearmen each of each unit of which is backed up by archers as well to make them quite formidable units on an individual basis in my opinion and uh, some skirmishes to the front so we've got two divisions here uh, the predominantly orange and blue ones and then these guys in the front with their skirmishes got a couple of scythe chariots I'm not sure we saw these before but they're cool I really like them they're just they're fun models to have in your army quite characterful as well and finally we have a, uh, a new division freshly painted so will inevitably run away at the first chance it gets of quite fetching white and green motif there these are on um, um, i've done these up special to be kind of like an auxiliary sort and they're going to be heavy infantry if you notice there's no archers in these units at all these are well apart from obviously the only archer unit there's apart from this small unit of archers at the front we're going to be going these as heavy infantry just the standard heavy infantry with swords and uh, no, yeah, yeah, swords and shields and uh, yeah it would be interesting to see how they play out okay and uh, yeah that's the persian art force which has intercepted the greeks and forcing them to battle and here are the Greeks who will be facing the Persians down, yes. Um, it's yes, it's four divisions uh, to match off against the four divisions of Persians to keep it easy for my small brain to process. And uh, the first of which is a cavalry division, which is, you know, which you know, matches the Persian cavalry division and everything except size and quality and, you know, probably motivation as well on the day. But uh, yeah, you've got two small units of medium cavalry and a small unit of light cavalry, so uh, the capability Capabilities of this much less than the uh, the Persian equivalent, but uh, nonetheless uh, they're there. And it's just a shame, you know, Greek cavalry was not a formation that gets talked about particularly uh, strongly in the histories. So, uh, but they're here. And uh, yes, uh, speaking of things which were though, we have the hoplites, which comprise the bulk of the rest of the Greek army in this battle and uh, yeah so we've got uh, three divisions sort of i've done them lengthways here uh, more or less just to make it easier for me to show them off uh, each consisting of three units of hoplites heavy infantry of course seen them in plenty of my battle reports against each other and against the persians and uh, yes these guys um these guys can kick ass um pretty well the phalanx rule really adds to the the uh, the heavy infantry stats anyway and yeah yeah it's, it's pretty good each 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 division as i said three units of hoplites at least a, a unit of a small unit of um, peltasts for each as well and uh, assorted skirmishes dotted around so just to make it a bit more fun okay so give them a bit of missile fire and some screening cover against the clouds of arrows that are going to be coming their way 
Uh, yeah, um, if, you know, I got the uh, the Vitrix Phalanx out again after their woeful appearance in the last battle reports when they fought on the side of the Spartans and basically held everything up. So yeah, uh, we're giving them another go, see if they can do better this time. And uh, yeah, there's the last division here. So three units of that, three divisions of them. So overall, the Greek force is slightly smaller than this than the Persians, but they have heavy infantry, more heavy infantry, and the phalanx rule, which will probably you know we'll see if that more that you know makes up for it or not. I've seen these uh, Greek heavy infantry go through Persians so many times down the hit down my wargaming club that uh, yeah it, it it may well be like that again. But we're going to see what happens this time uh, just so, just for formality's sake I'll mention that, uh, all, yeah, that some of the units in this Greek um, army are what we're calling uh, the, um, levy phalange, you know, hot plights and there's a smattering of um, elite ones as well just to mix things up but not too much again I've got a lot to keep track of anyway that's enough of that let's uh, get gaming so on this fairly barren, featureless uh, desert of a uh, battlefield, we've got the Greek deployment of a, uh, a long line of hoplite heavy infantry with the three divisions. The, on their right, the ones I'm looking at now, are the one, is the division with the most hoplites. So they've done the traditional organizational thing of uh, putting their strongest troops on the right flank to hopefully smash into their enemies and roll up their sides. As you can see their cavalry division is at the back hoping to uh, well it'll be deploying to support wherever is needed possibly to slow down the Persian cavalry and now moving down here just look at the Persians they've gone for a slightly different deployment with their cavalry all massed upon their right that's their strike force I suppose and uh, yes uh, the rest of their infantry um, well in a line ready to rain archery down upon the Greeks and the uh, the reinforcement heavy infantry at the back here just waiting well to uh, make themselves known placed centrally though is their best close combat formation The Greeks seized the initiative and the first turn, knowing that they could not stay back and uh, just await for the Persians to pounce upon them. The uh, the division on their right flank has leapt forwards two moves. However, their, their close formation has been broken up a little by the uh, obstacle in the board there. Uh, sadly, the middle divisions have not moved at all. Uh, yet again, these models cursing me with their uh, stubbornness. Uh, but the far other flank. Uh, has moved forwards one move just to try and uh, get things going for them. No shooting though, so uh, yes, it's over to the Persians. With a blare of war horns, the Persians started their turn and uh, went straight into action. They've uh, they launched their two scythe chariots against the Greeks. One this way, one over there, as you can see. Um, the Greeks over there are drilled, but unfortunately they were not able to open their ranks to let the chariot pass through, so into combat it smashed. Uh, long range sh um, shooting from Persian arrows managed to start uh, plinking amongst the Greek lines, only resulting in a couple of casualties on some light troops over there though. Um, in terms of who moved, the, um, the cavalry had a bit of a mixed bag, their horse archers have started enveloping the Greeks over here and uh, giving harassing fire to the Greek counterpart skirmishers. But that's basically all we've got to report apart from, of course, the actual damage from the chariots. Uh, the the Peltars here lost the combat but held their nerve. But uh, nonetheless, because they lost a the combat to side chariots, they are uh, they're, they're, they're disordered for next turn. The uh, the Greek hoplites had a much better time over here, hunkering down behind their shields and uh, fending off the worst of the damage. So they took no damage. But uh, sadly for the side chariots, they are one and done. So they are both gone for their for the purposes of this game they they were on here all too short a time but that is all common for the uh, for the persians right uh, for for side chariots should i say right okay back to the greeks turn 
changing the angle a little bit to show you the board from the other point of view to show you what the Greeks were advancing towards in terms of uh, massed Persian archery and shield bearers but uh, yes uh, they managed to consider uh, con continue their attack the middle division launched itself up the border whopping three moves the attack they continue moving up on their right the only people who didn't move up were these guys on their left who just adjusted their skirmishes a little bit and uh, just sort of stayed because they have to get this uh, well this disorder off of their peltasts which will come off at the end of the turn uh, yeah but they're not looking forward to going up against the Persian cavalry over here anyway anytime soon if they can help it so they're happy to refuse their flank the Greeks did try to deploy their cavalry a little bit up to cover the gap that's emerging between their infantry divisions but uh, they didn't get many orders off so couldn't do an awful lot there that's it uh, in terms of uh, damage there was no shooting still for the Greeks they're not a particularly shooty army don't know if you know that but their slingers did manage to cause a little bit of damage to the Persian horse archers and that's that really the Persians have started moving their cavalry up a little bit just to, to get them a bit better position for later but then they opened fire along the entire length of their battle line into the Greek uh, into the Greek lines and hit markers have started blossoming among the uh, the Greek forward elements which is their skirmishers Skir Greek skirmishers started to scream in agony a unit of theirs falling back disordered uh, in terms of movement the cavalry again the light cavalry have started to sweep around the uh, the horse archers have gone behind the phalanx now and a stray unit of light Persian cavalry has swept onto their side here just to cause nuisance okay and uh, yes the Persians definitely trying to uh, well um, loosen the Greek formations a bit before the inevitable clash and things get worse right uh, back to the Greeks for their turn now though while well, the Greek right has continued its uh, attack up there, its flank, it's becoming increasingly fragmented though and it's increasing desperation to get to grips with the Persians. They did drive off the Persian light cavalry you can see there, uh, but uh, to everyone's surprise probably the Greek centre has smashed into the uh, the Persian lines just here and uh, yeah we'll see how that goes in just a moment uh, they moved mighty mighty order distance worth that they did that time the uh, the Persian the, the Greeks over here and their cavalry however though have failed to move altogether unfortunately they are just content to sit back and watch possibly unnerved by the sight of the uh, Persian cavalry facing them down right well let's uh, have a look see what goes on in this close combat phase in the ensuing butchery of close combat, the Greeks exploderize this near, oopsie, this near unit of uh, Persians just here. They forced the second unit back with five casualties to, well, to one, back behind the Persian lines in, disor in rank disorder. And just uh, moving them now, uh, the Persian unit on the far end, I, uh, ironically, actually held it, held the Greeks to a draw, having peppered them with closing shots. Yeah, let's get in there with that bumping and grinding of spears. And yes, yeah, so that has revealed the back line of uh, Persian reinforcements here. Let's take that hit with them. And uh, yes, but yes, as, as usual, the Greeks are just smacking people around in close combat. It seems to be a theme whenever I get these two armies out. But uh, yeah, plenty of fight left in these Persians and let's see how it goes. And the Persians on this far flank continue to pour fire into the uh, the Greeks advancing towards them. There's a few hits blossoming here and there, but uh, not really slowing down the hoplites. Although it has destroyed the uh, the Greek skirmishers just here, they have been scattered by the mass firepower of the Persian ranks. Uh, the cavalry tried to be a little bit too clever by half and only really succeeded getting orders through to move one of their units up. Unfortunately for the Persians, they weren't really getting the decisive sweeping moves they were hoping for nonetheless though uh, yes yeah, back to the center though we've got uh, some th lots to report the uh, the Persian second line has crashed into the hoplites in their to their front through you know through the bodies of their comrades uh, probably and <laughs> yeah and uh, yes we're looking forward to some heavy infantry action there now uh, the rest of the remainder of this Persian division still embroiled in combat on their right flank on their left flank so I say we'll see how that goes 
while the Greeks certainly appear to have met their match in the uh, Persian reinforcement uh, division, they, uh, the heavy infantry uh, Persians have uh, yes, they've managed to break the spears of several Greek phalanxes in this particular combat phase, getting a draw on this far side here actually, but uh, forcing the Greeks in the middle right back and in disorder. Um, lucky not to break them really, it was only one point of morale off uh, on the morale dice. The, the Greeks, uh, for the main part, uh, for the rest of it though, managed to push their count Persian counterparts back over here. So it's a bit of a seesaw going on in, you know, in a big tight scrum in the middle. And uh, yeah, I know that uh, it's not a popular opinion that uh, Greeks can be beaten in close combat by Persians, but uh, I have some feelings on that matter, which I'll go to into just in a sec. The Persian army of this period usually gets fairly short shrift from rules and army book writers, often characterised as a horde army of poor quality troops. There are often only cosmetic differences noted between the army that established and maintained this vast empire and that which was crushed by Alexander the Great much later. Greek hoplites and Macedonian phalangites are able to wade through anything the Persians can muster with ease. However, that doesn't appear to be the case upon reading the histories. Even the mighty Spartans were fought to a standstill by heavy Persian infantry at Plataea. While Greek armies remained ever reluctant to engage a Persian force that had substantial cavalry support. It could be argued that the Persian army was a far better rounded and thus effective fighting force than those of the Greek city-states, but during the wars on the Greek mainland they were operating at the limit of their logistical range. Food for thought. Either way, I believe that wargamers should be more open to the idea of a multi-ethnic empire containing more in their army than just missile-armed levies. Okay, we're back on this side of the table as the Greeks uh, march once more and uh, yes, they, they've managed to send some cavalry in over there to try and chase off the uh, Persian horse archers who are marauding behind the lines. The phalanx on this side has moved up one and they started throwing some desultory javelins at the Persian cavalry who thought they had it all easy up until now. Uh, moving across, this combat is still ongoing. The ev the, yes, but they managed to reinforce their flagging unit in the middle with some peltasts in support now. We'll see how that pans out for them. But uh, yeah, this middle Greek um, formation is quite aggressive this turn, even getting some skirmishes in to chase, um, to hopefully to try to chase off their opponents on the other side, the Slingers. Uh, yes, and finally on this far right Greek side, they did manage to finally get a unit in through the storm of arrows into close combat um, with the Persians, but unfortunately they then blundered the rest of their moves, and uh, so it's only this one unit going in piecemeal, but uh, they are hoplites. We'll see if the Greek desire for freedom is enough to fend, uh, to, to fare them through. Well, let's see how it goes. Well, the Greek, a bit, a bit of Greek initiative did actually manage to shore up their battle line a little bit. They, did, they certainly managed to draw their combat in the centre despite going shaken here. Uh, the other unit of Greeks unfortunately went shaken as they were being pushed back by the relentless pressure from the Persians' um, heavy infantry. So we've got, yes, two shaken units of Greeks here. Uh, their third unit, however, managed to smash its, uh, the other, the, the normal Persians, shall we say, the medium infantry, spearmen backed up with archers and their supports, uh, meaning that the first division to break in this game was the uh, the, the front centre Persian division. They will be going uh, just in for good measure. Their, even their skirmishers, their slingers were broken in combat by an undead, well, uh, didn't do any damage back to their uh, to their Greek counterparts. So yes, well and truly gone that uh, that Persian, the any remaining units in that division will be retreating off the board for the remainder. So uh, yes, the centre is up in the air at the moment. Either side could win it right now. There's some marauding Greeks though, but never count out the Persian numbers. Um, but on this far side, the Greeks crashed into the centre of the Persian line on this left Persian flank here. It um, yeah, just they had to hunker down behind their shields because of the ungodly amount of support attacks coming their way. But they still managed to win the combat, but not push the Persians back they didn't do an awful lot of damage altogether so both sides uh, still squaring each other up okay right uh, whoa, battle continues well as we enter the Persian turn both sides are now truly embroiled in combat there's no Persian shooting anymore they were charged in or they're already engaged including this entire infantry division here is engaged with this one Greek unit uh, the cavalry on the far side have charged into the now shaken 
uh, Greek Peltasts trying to chase them off and uh, yeah we've got a lot uh, the cavalry have actually decided to start moving up we've got one unit screening all this this entire phalanx here because uh, who's going to charge Persian cavalry in the open not standard Greek phalangites anyway well not if they got brain and uh, yeah so this one now uh, this unit here now teeing up the possibly unneeded but we'll see flank attack into the Greeks here okay but uh, into the combat phase let's do some bumping and grinding well it's not been very good for the Greeks three of the four combats have resulted in their units being routed starting with these peltasts up here they got smashed uh, predictably by the Persian cavalry uh, the more surprisingly the Greeks in the center Bar uh, double one on their break test having lo narrowly lost well by well they lost by not narrowly but they they narrowly went over the margin they needed to make a test because they have the phalanx rule but uh, yes it, despite being elite they they went to a uh, drawn combat and that's enough for them to take a test and yeah that's a that was hardcore against them the persians now able to redress their lines and reawait more 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 greeks walking into their sights uh, in the center though is where this combat was ground out to a draw once again uh, but again the uh, the greeks here smashed by the persian heavies and uh, yeah no no it's uh, yes the persians really earning that reputation they had with the greeks at this time why the uh, mainland Greeks didn't want to mess with the Persians too much, especially when they had interior lines, etc. Yeah, so that's that for this turn. The holes are starting to appear in the Greek attack, but they still haven't had a division break yet, something the Persians can't boast. Command and control is starting to break down for the Greeks as they desperately try to come to grips with the Persians. Another unit of elite Greek phalanx uh, hoplites even managed to crash into the middle of the Persian line here hoping to get backed up by their friends who unfortunately failed their order and could not make it uh, more more happening along the sides I mean uh, we've got Greek commanders joining in combats everywhere to try and sh you know give themselves the edge before Persian numbers begin to tell the Greeks over here have actually decided to charge into the cavalry unfortunately going disorder doing so uh, but then nonetheless they're heavy infantry with a good stat line we'll see if that tides them through but uh, yeah the, the the Greek cavalry failing to arrive in time to do well anything meaningful and even this unit here staying at the back uh, we're just gonna go to the combat phase now see if what uh, what goes on both sides pump thumping each other once again the cavalry and the infantry are actually drawing uh, so that will hold in the infantry's favour over the course of time but uh, yeah carrying on the uh, the middle combat scrounged out to a loss for the Greeks but they passed their break test with flying colours meaning they did not they weren't going anywhere uh, over here however again the, the the Greek phalanx just got munched up once again by the massive Persian formation they were charging and even killed their commander into the bargain bargain this means that this another unit of phalanx goes and this breaks this Greek division on the far right. Unfortunately for them, they, they, they these, this unit of Greeks will have to saunter back towards their lines, uh, retreating gradually as they go. So yes, the, the Greek right flank, the Persian left, is now just carved open for the Persians to exploit if they can. But uh, yeah, it's over to the Persians now to see if they can get on with it. Uh, don't forget there's a unit of Greek <laughs> hoplites marching along the German towards the German rear as well. Uh, German? Persian rear <laughs> as well. So yeah, there we go. Yes, and a redressment of the ranks by the Persians all round, really. This uh, fire division pivoting, opening fire into the marching Greeks here, doing some damage, but not disordering them. The cavalry racing around the back and the weight of fire from all sides scattering this unit of uh, Greek javelinmen who'd been doing quite well up until now but that's them gone uh, the cavalry over here have crunched into their Greek counterparts they had to really they were screen you know the Greeks were doing a good job of screening so yes cavalry on cavalry but the Persians bringing weight of numbers to the party so yes we're gonna do the combat phase now and see if that is decisive and that combat phase does conclude matters for today unfortunately the Greeks just could not hold on uh, the Greek cavalry in the cavalry showdown were smashed by their superior Persian counterparts uh, despite the fact that these Greeks over here forced back the Persians in disorder it wasn't enough because in the center here the Greeks are absolutely have been battered 
to bits and uh, even though they managed to fight the Persians here to a mutual break pick both front line units being picked up in a draw um, both sides were shaken and so both sides broke uh, but the Persians have the meat to, to keep the fight going but this, this central Greek division has now been destroyed and uh, is taking too much damage it will have to withdraw from the field that's too many Greeks down now and that ends the game for their side altogether yes the Persians chase will be chasing them off the board I don't know if their cavalry will be in too much of a fit state to affect a, a good pursuit certainly of this fairly organized phalanx here but uh, yes a, a sound victory for the Persians whose firepower broke up the Greek um, advance and then uh, well there they have some more stalwart infantry this time to sort of soften to uh, to to keep the battle going once the initial shock of the Greek attack had, had happened had occurred yeah the, the, the Persian cavalry despite not actively getting too much involved especially in the early and mid phases of the battle just the threat of their presence was enough to keep the Greeks from going all hell for leather towards their enemies so uh, in that respect they 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 were a really good tactical advantage having this combined arms kind of style that the Persians bring but there we go uh, let's get off and uh, do some concluding despite lasting at least four years the Ionian revolt does not hold the same weight as that that the preceding events will the main surviving history of the time by Herodotus does mention it, but it does not consider it remarkable that the Persians were able to re-establish their dominance over their Greek subjects so methodically. Support for the Ionians from the Greek mainland states would uh, lead Persian eyes toward prospective conquest of these interfering outliers, with consequences to shape the development of civilization thenceforth. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know that what you thought in the comments below. I'm Shieldwall100 and I very much enjoy bringing these battle reports to you. Goodbye for now.